Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is the last TBR of the year. This is slightly delusional TBR for me. I think I'm gonna be okay, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and I will explain all of that in a minute. If, you, if you've been here for the past few months, I've been trying to finish quite a few books by the end of the year. My TBR is massive. This is actually my entire TBR, these three shelves, plus there's like 10 or 12 other books in the other in my bedroom that are like the next book in a series. So I'm trying to read as many as I can before the end of the year to get my TBR back down to like a more reasonable number. I've been trying to read 18 books a month for the past two months and I had 18 books to take into December that I needed to read. And I have been able to achieve more than 18 books the past few months. Therefore, the 18 books that I was supposed to read in December is a little, I do believe based on now I have about a week and a half left of the month, I should be able to read Chain of Thorns and the Shadowhunters Codex before the end of November. So these are no longer on my December TBR. They are a priority to finish up this month. And I'm also going to try to read Quicksilver. That will be the only book that may carry in to not, into December. If I start it this month and don't get to finish it because the final weekend of the month is the holiday weekend. And while in my mind, I'm like, that's gonna give me all this time to read. There's so much that has to go on that weekend. So, and I think that Sunday is actually the first of December. So I don't even get the full weekend to try to read. So that may be a book, Quicksilver may be a book that actually does semi make it onto my December TBR, even though I'm starting it, planning on starting it in November. So just keep that in mind. So I do still have the other 15 books that I was going to read and a little Christmas book. And I'm going to put, this is a little bit different and I might carry this into next year. I have the 10 books that are the oldest on my TBR that are not being carried in to 2025 as one of my 25 in 2025. There's like three that were in the actual top 10. So I had to do like the top 13. But anyway, these are 10 and I'm going to put them in my stocking and I'm gonna pick three, we'll say three to offset the three that I took out. And I may carry this into like next year. Like I said, I may replace those three with the next three on the list and then maybe every month pick two so that I'm constantly reading my oldest books, at least two of those a month. But that is gonna be towards the end of the video. First, we're gonna talk about the books that I do plan on reading. The reason I am being a little more reaching with this TBR is because 90% of it is romance. And I can read a romance book in a day, usually pretty easily. Some of these may take me two days just because of the length of them, but a 350 page romance book, I can usually read in a day, even with work. So. That's why I'm like, okay, maybe I could squeeze a few more in. And out of these top 10, two of them are thrillers and the rest are romance. So it's not like I'm adding a massive fantasy to my TBR anyway. Most of my new books are fantasy. So that would be more of a stretch. To start, I will talk about the fantasy books that I am carrying in to December. The first two I do not own yet. They are coming out in December. Number one is A Monsoon Rising by Thea Guanzon. That is the second book in the Hurricane Wars series. I don't know how many books it's going to be, and I'm very excited for that. It is a rebel slash like king. I don't know. It's like it's it's enemies to lovers. There's a rebel gang, and then there's like the leadership, and they're they're fighting against each other. And she is part of the rebels, and he is the son of the guy that is like in charge of everything. So there's like magic and everything too. Very Star Wars-esque. I love that book. So I'm very excited to see what A Monsoon Rising comes out as. And I've seen really good reviews on people that have arcs. So that's exciting. The second book I don't have yet comes out the first week of December. And that is The End of the Story, I believe it's called. And it is the final book in Melissa De La Cruz's The Chronicles of Never After, which is like a middle grade series that I've been reading. And I know I can read that book in a day because it is middle grade and I have read every other one in a day easily. So that's another reason why. One of these fantasy books I know isn't even gonna take me that long. So those are the two I don't have yet. The other two are Sky Shade, which I just got by Alex Astor. This may be the first book I read because I want to read this book so badly. It's gonna be towards the beginning of the month, but it is part of my winter TBR. So I am trying to hold off until starting, to start it until December 1st. But this is the third book in the Light Lark series and I feel like something big is gonna happen in this one. Can't really talk too much about the plot, but there are like leaders from these different parts of the kingdom that come together and every so many years on this island of Lightlark and they're supposed to 
battle it out and one of the rulers has to die in order to save everybody else's like parts of the land but no one has actually done that yet so that's how the first book is and then it kind of just continues on from there very exciting. And then the other fantasy I have is Masters of Death by Olive Blake. And this is a haunted house vampire ghost romance fantasy. That's all I got. Um, I'm excited to read this. I have enjoyed Olive Blake's writing. It is a little bit denser. So this is a book I do not believe I will finish in a day, but it's not too long. It's only about 400 pages, which is pretty short for um, a fantasy novel. But for her writing, it takes me a little bit longer to get through. So I know that this is a book that's probably gonna take me the longest to read in this month. Now, the two thrillers I have are, one's technically a horror, and that is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This is about a girl that goes back to the motel that her aunt went missing from years ago and gets a job there to try to figure out like what happened to her aunt. And I think the same things start happening to her. It's all I really know. I don't wanna know too much going into a thriller or a horror, but. I've heard really good things about this. This seems to be a lot of people's favorite Simone St. James book. And I've read the final, I, rem I read one of her books. I can't remember what it was called, Something Girls. And I really liked that book. So I did want to buy another one of hers and I got this. I don't remember where I got this, but I've had it for a while. So I really wanted to read it in this time of the year. And the other one is The Retreat by Sarah Pierce. This is the book that comes after the sanatorium with the character, the main character that's in this. I do believe you can read them individually. I do not think you have to read them together. They're two completely different cases, but she basically goes to this island retreat and somebody dies. And now they think there's like a serial killer on the island. Again, don't wanna to know too much going into it. I did enjoy the sanatorium. So I am hoping that the retreat is just as good. I have one nonfiction book that I plan on reading. And that is The Problem With Everything by Megan Dom. This is again, a very short book, just over 200 pages. And it is about like the millennial mindset and her thoughts on that is the best way to describe it. So not much else to say about that. Now on to the thousands of romance novels that I have to read. The first is the final book in the Twisted series, Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. And this is Christian and what's her name? Stella. So Stella is the influencer friend and Christian is the friend of Reese from the second book. So he's like a bodyguard-esque kind of guy. Like I think he was Christian. I think Christian was Reese's boss, something like that. So we'll see. I don't know how people feel about this one. I can't remember if this is what the one people like the most or dislike the most. I can't remember, but I've enjoyed the series so far. It is very spicy. That's all I have to say. I still have to read the next book I'm reading is actually the third Twisted book, so we shall see how that plays out, but I am excited to finish that series. Another series I will be catching up on is The Boys of Toman, and this is Taming Seven, the fifth book, the first in Gibbsy and Claire's point of view. I've heard disappointing things about this. I do not believe it will even be close to Redeeming Six. That is probably one of my favorite books I've ever read. Um, and this is just so much shorter, so I don't know how deep we're going to be able to get, but I did hear a rumor that she may write another one in Claire and Gibbsy's point of view, because I've been really excited for their story. And this seems like a disservice to them with it being so short, but again, excited to get back into that world. I was obsessed with redeeming six and saving six, but, and I did enjoy binding and keeping 13, but I definitely think the six part is my favorite. Catching up on another series is Chloe Lisa's Better Hate Than Never. And this is about... It's about two people that had like the same backyard, like their family friend, their families are friends, but they never really got along because they both think that the other one disliked them. But then like desire, um, you know, hate, hate and love are such a closely defined line that that's, I think, basically what goes. It's a romance. We all know what's going to happen. But Chloe Lee writes neurodivergent romances, and I really enjoyed, um, I can't remember the first book in the series but this is also uh, Two Wrongs Make It Right. So this is also supposed to be like a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew, which the first book was also a retelling of a Shakespeare book. I can't remember which one, but I really liked her writing. I really liked the story. It was a really sweet, relatively closed door, I believe, romance. I don't think there were a lot of spicy scenes. So looking forward to that. And then the third and final book in that series comes out in, dis in January. So I will be reading that. Another series I'm going to be, there's a lot of the series books that I have to read this month, but Business Casual, the final book in the Love Light Farm series. This is about Nova and Charlie and Charlie is like a lawyer or something, investment banker. He works in the city and Nova is a tattoo artist and they've kind of like, I think have been like friends with benefits and they think that they can just kind of, you know, hook up and it will be fine. But 
they both have feelings for each other. And I think that's been pretty obvious in the past few books because it's been talked about. It hasn't just been like hinted at, like people have actually said that to, to them. So I'm looking forward to this. This is one of the guy's sisters. I can't remember which character that is his sister, but this series has been good. I've enjoyed it. Not my favorite by any means, but I do enjoy BK Vordenson's writing. And she has another book coming out in February that I'm excited to read. Another book I will be reading is Dishonestly Yours by Chris and Becca Ritchie. This is the first book in a new series and it is about this, these families that I believe are involved in like risky business or whatever and Haley and Phoebe, so Phoebe's our main character and her best friend Haley, they try to move away to get away from the families and start over and then Haley's brother Rocky comes with them and doesn't want to like live honestly or anything. So he's like pushing them, pushing them, pushing them. And their past, like his and Phoebe's past is messy. So um, there's obviously, I think it'll be a little bit of a romance there. I've only read the first book in the Addicted series and I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, I may like it if I continue reading it. It just hasn't been one that I've been itching to continue, but I did want to pick that up. Not only is the cover awesome, but it does sound interesting. I also have Mariana Zapata's All Roads Lead here. This will be the first Mariana Zapata book I read. So I am excited to see if I like her writing. And this is a grumpy sunshine, single dad, neighbor, proximity romance. A girl moves to town because she just had a bad breakup. This is her neighbor. I'm assuming slow burn. So our spice will probably be that much of the book, but that's fine. I do like a good slow burn. I do like a closed door romance a lot too. So that doesn't bother me. Very excited for that. Then I have Christina Forrest's The Neighbor Favor, which is about a girl who has like a pen pal relationship with her favorite author, but he uses a alias to write, like a pen name. And then he like ghosts her. And then I think something happens with like her neighbor. Yeah, so she's attracted to her neighbor. He's gonna help her because she has to go, she has to find a date to her sister's wedding. So she is attracted to Nick, who is her neighbor, who is also the author that she doesn't know that he's the author. Mistaken identity, famous, not famous. We'll see how that goes. I really liked, I met her earlier this year and I really liked her and how she talked about her writing style and where she gets her inspiration from. And there is the partner plot is the second book in that interconnected standalone. So I do have that and I really wanna to get to that as well. So I have to read this first. Then I have The Christmas Tree Farm by Lori Gilmore. So this is one that I added to the list. I did get the Pumpkin Spice Cafe and the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore. And I wanted to save this and read it for Christmas. So this will be like my Christmas book, um, probably Christmas Eve, Christmas Day book, just because I know I read the I read the Pumpkin Spice Cafe in like two hours. So I know this is one that I can fit into that day without having to like lock myself in a room to read. But after, you know, some of the family time, there's a break before dinner and everything. So that, that'll give me something to do. And then a book I'm gonna try to read around New Year's is the Second Chance Year about a girl who basically loses everything and goes to this psychic and wishes to have her year back so she can change everything and not like lose her boyfriend, lose her house, lose her job, all that kind of stuff. But then meets this guy on New Year's Eve, really hits it off with him. Then the next day she wakes up and the year has been reset. So now she has to like find this guy again, decide what she really wants, you know, that whole spiel. But it sounds really cute. I saw it in Barnes and Noble like months ago. I bought this in like June or July and I was like, perfect new year book. So I bought it and I've been holding on to it. All right, now I'm gonna fold these up, put them in the stocking and then we'll pick three books off of the oldest part of my TBR. I can go over these actually so that you know what's in there. The Partner Plot, which is the second book in Christina Forrest's series that I was just talking about. Brutal Prince, which is a Sophie Lark book. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Una Out of Order, which I think is like fantasy magical realism and it's by Margarita Montemore. Um, I've never heard of her writing, but that was like a GMA book club or something like that. The Library of Lost Things by Laura Taylor Namey. And that is a book I just picked up at Ollie's one day. Nothing But It All by Adriana Locke. Uh, it was a book out of my romance reveal box, which is a box I do not get anymore. I actually did cancel that subscription because they kept sending me books that were not on the tropes that I liked. And I was just kind of sick of paying for that and not getting books that I was telling them I wanted to read. So You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen M. McManus. King of Wrath by Anna Huang. That will determine when I read Twisted Lies because I want to finish that series before I, if I get that one, um, I want to finish the Twisted series before I read The Kings of Sin, Princes of Sin, whatever it is. 
Kings of Sin. A Guide to Being Just Friends by Sophie Sullivan. Again, another book I picked up on an Ollie's trip. And Loathe to Love You by Allie Hazelwood, which is her novella collection. That would be a nice one to read. I'd be caught up on all hers. So this is like a tighter fit in here than I thought. So I'm going to have to like really mix it up. But we're going to pick three and then I'll add them to the pile. First one, Brutal Prince, which is great because I just bought like three more of the books in that series off of Book Outlet because they were having a sale. So this is a marriage of convenience, I think, or like a forced marriage. And this is like a mafia-esque romance series. Um, the book is nice and short. That's actually perfect because this is like under 300 pages. So I know this will be another quick read. Gives me hope that I will actually finish this TBR, even though I'm being a little unrealistic. But I try to, you know, stave off the seasonal depression with reading as I'm sure most of us do. Number two, King of Wrath. So I will be reading Twisted Lies early on in the month. I do have the second one. I don't remember what that is, but I actually have no idea what this is about, so please hold. Uh, okay, a forced engagement, billionaire CEO to a jewelry heiress and daughter of his newest enemy. So it's enemies to lovers and also, I think, forced engagement. Sounds good. I love a good billionaire romance. This is a slightly longer book. It's closer to 400 pages, but um, her writing is very digestible, and I believe it's also on Kindle. And I always read faster on my Kindle, so that helps. I think Brutal Prince is too, but that book is so small that I'll probably just read it. Ah, oh, yeah, like with, you know, the physical book. Last one Nothing But It All by Adriana Locke. And this is like an older couple romance, I think, like. This, this couple has been married for like 20 years and they're having issues with their marriage so their kids are kind of forcing them to go on a vacation to rekindle that romance. So again, pretty sure this is very short. Yeah, 250 pages. Excellent short read. Um, writing's not even that small. So feeling more confident now that those are the three books I added. Um, and I will keep these other seven and we'll add three more to the list for the new year and i will probably make that maybe like a vlog series and do two books or three books whatever probably two um off of the oldest books on my tbr every month so that's it that is the ten thousand books i plan on reading it's not that many 18 19 19 books so it's only one more than i had initially planned on reading so i wanted to replace the ones i took off and then thought since they were all pretty short books that I could I would be okay doing that so that is it that is the final TBR for 2024 I am very excited for January's TBR I will be doing that slightly differently as well because that is my birthday month so I'm very excited for that one and stay tuned for some more fun end of the year videos and I thank you so much if you've made it this far for watching and hope to see you in the next video